another one two weeks. Next week, St. John's service will be in church. It will be communion. Uh, and and uh, church on Saturday night will be out in St. Paul. The following week, St. John's service will be here as a drive-in uh, at, at 9 o'clock in the evening again. Uh, so we'll, and we'll, we'll be getting that out in the text message also. Uh, the order of service tonight, the, the bulletin was uh, online. Hopefully you've gotten it. Uh, I'll announce the pages in the hymnal. We'll be following page 151 for the oh, order God. of service. We also have the opportunity to, for you, if you brought an offering tonight, we will be receiving an offering as you leave. If you go out this way on Birch Street, uh, there'll be uh, offering baskets on both sides where you can, uh, where, uh, and, and someone will be uh, available to uh, receive your offering if you brought it tonight. We will begin our worship service with hymn number 644, The Church's One Foundation, 644 in Lutheran Service Book.
The order of service is found on page 151 of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The epistle reading for the 8th Sunday after Pentecost is from Romans chapter 8. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justified who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We sing the Alleluia on page 156. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea, 
and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. Our next hymn is number 746 in the Lutheran service book, Through Jesus' Blood and Merit. Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God on which we base our meditation <coughs> this evening is the Epistle Lesson from Romans chapter 8. We hear again these words. 
We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, this is a sermon about nothing. Well, actually it's a sermon about Jesus, and Jesus isn't nothing, but nothing figures prominently in today's epistle lesson, so that's the title of our message today. Now I realize I'm sort of opening myself up for a few humorous put-downs here. What was the sermon about today? Nothing. Or if someone asked one of you, did Pastor have a good sermon this week? Eh, it was nothing. Actually, nothing is a good thing to talk about with this passage from Romans, because Paul clearly states that nothing can separate us from the love of God. The first and last verses of our text form kind of a neat framework that expresses the main point. In verse 28, all things work together for good for those who love God. And of course, it's God who is working all things for our good. And in verses 38 and 39, nothing can separate us from the love of God, who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God works all things for our good, therefore nothing can separate us from God's love. So today, from our text, we're going to look at nothing, from three different angles. One, if God is for us, nothing can stand against us. Two, if God has justified us, nothing, or no one, can condemn us. Three, if Jesus has won the victory for us, we are more than conquerors, and nothing can separate us from God's love. Now we all know that there are some people who do allow themselves to be separated from God's love. We are our own worst enemy. Sometimes we have a sinful nature that chooses to separate itself from God's love. We've all seen confirmants who after confirmation either don't come back to church at all or just gradually disappear from the pew. In spite of the good teaching that they have received from God's word, they fall away. But what the passage says is still true. It says that because all things, because God works all things for good, nothing can separate us, his believers, from his love. We can choose to separate ourselves from him, and God doesn't stand in our way. He will not hold us against our will, like a little child holding a cat squirming in an attempt to get away. But he is always ready to take us back when we repent and return to him, as we see in the parable of the prodigal son. God's love for us is a father's love. It is a love that hangs on, even in the toughest of times. It is a love that seeks and waits and searches and waits some more, and finally, by grace, finds and welcomes back home. And nothing and stop his love. That's why we have the three nothing statements in our text. Actually, Paul asks them all as questions. He asks, first of all, if God is for us, who can be against us? And the answer is nothing or no one. Now, if God is for us, doesn't mean there's a chance he's not. We call this a condition of reality. If God is for us and is who can stand against us. We talk this way all the time, don't we? If there are two detours on 141 going towards Sioux City, then I'm going to go up Highway 20 instead. There are two detours, so I'm going to take another road. Or if your teacher wants that assignment done for tomorrow, you'd better get to work. <laughs> There's no arguing that the teacher wants the assignment done. God is for us. He is on our side. He did not spare his own son, Paul said, but gave him up for us all. He sent Jesus to rescue us from our enemies, sin, death, and the devil. Do you think they have a chance? Not against the Almighty God. The devil, the world, and our sinful nature, the 
unholy three that try to lead us away from God and His love. If God is on our side, are they going to be successful? No way. God did not spare His only Son, but gave Him up for us all. How will God not also, with Him, graciously give us all things? There's that all things again. All things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. That's you, that's me, that's all believers, called in baptism, led to love God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And what does God promise to graciously give us? All things. Everything we need to stand against the enemy so that no one can be against us. His Holy Spirit to strengthen us in faith and keep us in our faith. The Word of God, which is our armor in battle. The protection of His holy angels so that the wicked foe may have no power over us, as the prayer says. It includes all good things we need for our body and life on earth so that we do not doubt God's goodness and fall away from Him. If God is for us, who can be against us? No one. Nothing. Paul asks a second set of questions having to do with our standing before God. Who shall bring any charge against those, against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? The answer is no one. We are God's elect. He has chosen us to be his own. In verse 29, Paul says, For those God foreknew as his own, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those who he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. All of these things describe God's work in us who believe in Jesus. And it's been going on since the beginning of time. He foreknew us. He chose us in Christ before the world was created. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his Son. His eternal purpose is for us to be made like his Son, perfect, holy, in order to do that, he called us to faith in our baptism. He justified us, taking our sins away and declaring us not guilty because of Jesus' death on the cross. And he glorified us, giving us the inheritance of his riches in heaven. All that is already done. Who is going to bring a charge against us and make it stick? No one. Jesus died for us. Our sins were on him. Jesus rose for us. The sentence has been served in full. God has dropped all the charges against us. He will not listen to the devil or others who try to accuse us. He listens to Jesus, who is at the right hand of God, who is interceding for us. No one can condemn us when God is the one who declares us righteous and justifies us. Paul asks one more question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There are lots of things that threaten to separate us from the love of Christ. There are so many of them that Paul puts them in two different lists. First, he lists seven troubles of life. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? That about covers everything. Nakedness would include poverty or financial hardship. Persecution would include being hated or shunned for our faith. Danger would include the pandemic. Can any of those things separate us from the love of Christ? No. Paul says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors is actually one word in the Greek. It's like super conquerors. Mm -hmm. You are a super conqueror. You have total victory over all those things because Jesus won the victory with his death and resurrection. And if Jesus has won the victory for us, and he has won the victory for us, then what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Paul has another list, 10 forces or powers this time. Neither death nor life. Did you hear that? Not even death will separate us from God's love in Christ. His love is still ours in heaven. Nothing in life will separate us from God's love. His love is there through all the trials and tribulations of life on earth. The list goes on. Nor angels. There are evil angels trying to separate us from Jesus, but they can't. Oh, them lions, they can eat my body, but they can't swallow my soul. No, no. That's a 
song from camp. <laughs> Your rulers, governments have tried to shut down churches, but they cannot separate us from God's love. Nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing you are going through in your life right now, nothing that will happen to you in the future, can take God's love in Jesus away from you. Nor powers of any kind. There is no power stronger than God's love. Nor height, nor depth. From the highest mountain to the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's a nice framework at the beginning and the end of the text again. First verse, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Last verse, for I am sure that neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. I know, I am sure, confidence, confidence in Christ. So we are back to the main point of the sermon. God works all things for good, therefore nothing can separate us from God's love. God is for us, therefore nothing can stand against us. God has justified us through Jesus' death and resurrection. No one can accuse us. Jesus has won the victory in all things. We are more than conquerors over all the troubles of life and all the forces of evil in the world. Nothing can separate us from his love. So what is there that can possibly take away your salvation, your victory over sin and death, your hope of heaven? You know the answer. Nothing. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession, <coughs> and mercy upon mercy. Hear your people who cry to you in need, and remember us according to the favor you have shown to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. That the Lord may open our hearts to prayer and guide us in this holy conversation so that we may know those things for which we ought to pray and seek them according to his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have, mercy. have mercy. That the church may prosper, the good news of Jesus Christ go forth unhindered, and the Spirit bring many into the fellowship of the redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the Lord may grant to us good and faithful pastors to preach and teach the whole counsel of his word receive their words with joy and thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may remember our baptism into Christ and live boldly in our vocation as his children, no matter the difficulties of this fallen world, within our families, in our neighborhoods, and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the Lord may bless our nation and those who govern us, and that we may use the gift of freedom to live holy, upright, and godly lives the praise of his glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the Lord may bless all lawful occupations and professions, and that we may pursue honesty and virtue in all things, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That God's people may recognize the true treasure of the cross and rejoice in the resurrection, pursuing with all their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls the things of his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The sick may be healed, the troubled granted peace, the grieving comforted, and the dying kept in peace. Especially we pray for Melvin Gosler and Brett Beavers who are undergoing cancer treatments, Paul Briggle and Carol Meyer recovering from surgery, Marcus Lee, the grandson of Sam Lee, who will be undergoing surgery on Tuesday, for renewed health for Jolene Kettleson, Milroy Raby, Marlon, Marlon Jepson, 
Arlene Namitz, Linda, the wife of Wayne Shaw in Illinois, for those in our congregations and communities suffering or recovering from COVID-19, for the grieving, the family of Don McCall, who was given Christian burial on Monday, and the family of Francis Weigel, who was given Christian burial on Friday, and all those whom we name in our hearts, that the Lord would comfort and sustain them with his mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God's people may receive the blessing, that receive his blessings with thankful hearts, including the news that the test James McGill underwent recently showed no malignant tumor. With thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may be steadfast and immovable, abiding in Christ and in his word of truth, and that we would be kept from error and delivered from temptation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the Lord may watch over our comings and goings and deliver us safely into the arms of his mercy and the blessed rest of the faithful, to receive with all the dead in Christ the gift of life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Holy God, mighty Lord, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. Hear the prayers of your people who cry to you in their need and who plead to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 924 in the Lutheran Service Book. Oh, we do the benediction first, I guess. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now we will sing hymn number 924 in the Lutheran Service Book. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Thank you all for coming. God's blessings to you on this new week. And uh, I will be on vacation this week, but I will be back for next weekend services. Remember, 6 o'clock at St. Paul and 9 o'clock Sunday morning communion service here in the church at St. John. God's blessings on your way home.